You took a phone to somewhere in Stratton. Um, I, I knew Stratton. Yeah, I knew Stratton. Mm -hmm. I used to live in Stratton. That's why we went. Oh. <coughs> I just wanted to tell you that you're absolutely right. You weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't go up to Norwood Grove. Norwood Grove. Yeah. Stratton, then there's Stratton Common. Then you go through the little, what's called the rectory. And then you come to another little park. And it's called Norwood Grove. And I can tell you where to go there, because if you go there, there are burn marks in the grass. <laughs> 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 suggesting that energy contracts in the body and then there's a sense of identity and when that drops away you could call that liberation. But that's a story. None of those things actually happen. They're not really. So contraction into 
separation is not a real thing, it's really a line. It's one list of power to become <coughs> separate from itself and rushing all over the world looking for itself. So, when we the <coughs> box away, that contraction, does it expand? It? It well, yeah, but it never <coughs> contracted. <laughs> It's not, you know, there wasn't a real contraction, there was only an apparent contraction. There's no real person, there's no unreal person, there's no secret, there's no unreal person. This is mystery. Mm. And all the time there's a sense of someone, then the someone wants to know and make sense. But this message does not make sense. And then when the me collapses, there's a oh, oh. And then people find out and say, Tony, I realise now why you never made sense. <laughs> they say, I can't, tell, I can't tell you what the carpet's like. I can't tell you what this is like. You can't tell me. Nobody can ever tell you. He's not laughing, he's very serious. It can't be understood. There is a resonance, a sort of sense of it. Recognise you could say, but it's like it's like a resonance, which is another word for echo. It's like something that's there <coughs> that is hidden, or in a way it seems to be hidden. And when this is heard, somewhere that resonance arises, and it's like, like there can suddenly be a, ah. Because as the lady described, Kayla, she resonates with the Yeah, yeah. Without yeah. understanding. Yeah. And there are certainly, through all the, like the Gospels and the Scriptures and all those things, there are some bits of that which are about this. <coughs> Most of it's, you know, it's, it's about teaching and progress and process. But uh, there, is, there are words in there. Jesus came out with a few corpus. And, <laughs> <laughs> and there are the Shakespeare also, these people like that, are trying to express this. And, and, and then... And when it's read, there's something about it that's beyond <coughs> the whole idea of teaching.
Well, love is the beloved. Love is one. It's unconditional wholeness. It can't be described or known. It's this. It's this. All the time there's someone that can't be, that doesn't seem apparent, but when the me which feels separate just falls away, it suddenly is obvious that everything is unconditional love. But it can't be disguised like everything else, it can't be known. And it's not like a love of... Oh. It's, it's completely all in place. It's, it's, I get, it's terror, it's ugliness, it's everything. So it's not love for a 
because someone wants to love it just for It's attention. just that unconditional love is it's not particular, is it? It's unconditional, just for math, the biological, yeah. psychology, and everything. Yeah. All embracing. When there's a, a witnessing of um, say, suffering, we're witnessing of suffering. Is is there is there a movement to the <coughs> There can be or not. There's no rules. Okay. It's just it's just confusing when you get the family teachings about, about you know being being good and being kind and you know saving the world. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Which kind of makes sense from this point of view. From the separate point of view, then being compassionate and saving the world makes sense because there is a belief that the world is real. There is a real world. When when it's all over, it's obvious that there is nothing, there is no world that is real. It's just an appearance. But the (coughs) idea of compassion for this or not for that simply doesn't arise anymore. Compassion. You could, in another way, you could say compassion is that which destroys the illusion of separation. And anything like teaching or helping somebody, uh, which makes them feel better for a while, is simply a complicity to continue with the dream. It's not compassion. There's nothing wrong with it, though, it doesn't. It It just goes on encouraging or reinforcing. Yeah. A sense of separation, yeah. and that there's something you can do about it, and there's something that needs saving, or that there's good and bad. And yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, the sort of compassion that the meeting of is very much a dualistic. Yeah. Um, do you celebrate birthday parties? Do you celebrate your own birthday? Happy birthday? Uh, do I, I? I don't have birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I do join in sort of things like Christmas and birthday. Yeah, it's good fun. And I also watch East End. Would be the concept of age, the Sorry? concept of age, the concept of age, and well, age who's age. who's birthday? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's like, there's a joining in with what's happening if that goes for or if it just happens. There's no one that chooses to join in or not join. Yeah. It's a typical me teaching, yeah. Okay. So you, you don't see it as well. Oh, of course not, because you're still in the self and, and trying to uh, help yeah. others and so on. It's simply uh, another structure. It's another process. 
which seems to the self. But, but actually, funny enough, when you actually analyse it, the self choosing to help another is only really helping itself. Yeah. Because oh, I'm, going, I'm going to help you now. Aren't I lovely? <laughs> it's all that. It's all a feedback into the self. Can't do anything but feed itself. So. Uh, and ultimately, that, that would be a self-sacrifice and giving to others. Because uh, actually, in the end, it's self-glorification. It can only be that, because that's the only uh, reality that the self knows about, the journey's the reality. Yeah. And yet. And yet. <laughs> And yet there does seem to be a satisfaction yes. of some sort in yeah. when, when you know, almost sort of just a sense of relief. Yeah. When you do Which is nice. Which is nice. Yeah, just to stop focusing. You're back in the club, it's nice. Yeah. <coughs> do you want to nice or do you want to die? That's God for out. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait until I get you up here. Yeah. <laughs> <Are> you bastards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I won't be going up there. I'll wait get halfway. <laughs> Straight down. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> What do I think about animals? Are they in the same animals? <coughs> well, apparently, um, it's been established that the only um, animal that has a brain that's capable of creating <coughs> a sense of, uh, of identity is the human. <coughs> it's sophisticated enough, apparently, neuroscientists have discovered 
to uh, artificially create a sense of individuality. The brains of animals are not, are not sophisticated enough to do that, so there's no sense of separation. Although they behave in certain ways and have characteristics, there's no, apparently no sense yet of having a sense of being separate. They just, just aren't being. Everything else is being. The human being is trying to be. So what happens when we laugh? Well, laughing can often be sort of there's no one that's just laughing. It's like a there are certain activities where there seems to be no sense of me. Um, you, you can get lost, in, the, the me is lost in what seems to be happening. Laughter is one of them. Making love, if the energy is there, then there can come a time in making love where there seems to be no identity. It's just what's happening. <laughs> Extreme sports are very um, attractive these days because extreme sport takes you out of. I don't know whether you watched a program recently called The Brain. Yeah. And there was um, a guy uh, in one of the early ones, I think it was the second one. I mean, uh, Eagleman was more or less saying, well, it was saying the same thing as, as this, except in the story terms, don't forget. But there is nothing but the brain. But the, he knew of a mountaineer friend of his. And this guy climbed mountains without any sort of uh, changing, it was just free climbing. And uh, the main reason was not because of the climbing, it's because there was no me. There. He went into a state of, he seemed to go into a state of no me. There seemed to be no one there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that can happen with lots of activities, positive attraction. The whole cloak of, of me is no longer the of itself. It's like a sort of freedom. What is this? <coughs> I was wondering, do you think that the um, energetic shift you talked about when the children go from the one to no. two, whether that's an inevitable thing or whether it's a cultural thing? Is, is there anything that can be... It's not cultural, but it's not inevitable. Uh, I haven't ever met anybody who was never separate, but I, don't, I think that's possible. There aren't any rules. There's certainly nothing to do with culture, it's to do with energy. It's a contracted energy, but it's an energy that <coughs> becomes contracted and arises in the body, in the brain. And that will happen anywhere, where there's Usually, humans. usually, yeah. Right.
to me thinking it's a me, does that? It's a way to stick each and think of it, yeah. Self-awareness. Self-awareness self is the initial birth of me. And that awareness keeps you locked into the idea that you are a person. As you grow, you develop that. <coughs> if you talk to people in, in the street, they would tell you, well, of course I'm a person. It's probably normal. Everybody's a person. <coughs> it's Satan is granted. Oh, no, it's not <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't know what I'm looking for really. I think, yeah, if the role of thought plays in perpetuating this or has nothing to do oh, with thought, it. Oh, thought, no, no, thought does perpetuate it. It's not the reasoning behind it, it's not the air. The, the basic source of separation is an energetics apparent source. Uh -huh. of being uh, suddenly there's a contracted energy in the brain. The, the brain, the neuroscientists have discovered, creates an artificial sense of person. And then it's kind of a, like an assumption that it, that it is there when yeah. it really it isn't. Yeah. And it becomes more and more powerful <coughs> because as the child grows, he seems to be living with a lot of other persons. <coughs> so it's absolutely normal for, for that person to live in a dualistic reality which is full of other apparent people. So this message is completely, <coughs> completely confounds the normally accepted society we live in, the way we grow up, and it also completely confounds or turns over the whole idea that there is something you can do about not being separate with spiritual teaching. <coughs> um, so would you say that um, the important aspect of this like this energy the contracted energy which you talk about, there's also a sense of energy that becomes blocked or becomes stuck, uh, and that's a sense of suffering which causes the need or the, the need to transcend that, to get beyond yeah. that. And, um, but yet, there's all these teachings about awareness, become aware of this feeling, yeah. don't act on it. No, that's based on the, on the idea that there is such a thing as an individual with free will and choice. That's completely illusion. Yeah. All teachings are based on the idea of free will and choice yeah. and a process to something. Yeah. They're, they're leading to something else. There isn't anywhere to go because all there is is this. Yeah, the con kind of concession to this me. Mm. Oh, yeah, well, it's, a, it's part of the me story. Teaching not being me, or teaching transcending me, or teaching becoming an enlightened me, is all part of the story. Yeah. <coughs> Tony, can you say a few words about the heart? Sorry? Can you say a few words about the heart? Because Ramana talks about the heart, talks about the heart. I can't hear you. Can you speak a bit slower? Could you say a few words about the heart? It's the heart. The spiritual heart. It's a thing in, in there that beats and the blood pumps. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a spiritual idea of the heart being some sort of energetic it doesn't get off the ground. It's a romantic idea about the heart. Are you in the heart? You know, there's only love and, you know, and open. And do you especially love me? You know, really it's, a, it's, a, it's an idea about the heart being something connected with love. Why would Amara use this idea? Where, where did it? Why would Ramana Maharshi, or Rumi, Kabir? Oh, Ramana Maharshi was a teacher. He taught self inquiry and, and other things, meditation. So it was coming from a dualistic point of view. Was Rumi a teacher as well? Rumi? Yeah. I don't know. So a lot of Rumi stuff is, is pointing to this, and a lot isn't. Okay. Thank you. Because some of his poetry sort of points to it. This is pointing beyond. This is pointing beyond the self. Teachers point to the self. So some of Rumi's poems are somehow pointing to this, and others are pointing, not are pointing to the personal endeavor <coughs> and choice. So do you think teachers point to the self because they know that that's how they get people? Well, no, I think they're very sincere. <coughs> Most of them are very sincere. Um, but, but it's a misguided sincerity because it's based on the idea that there is someone with choice and there is a path leading to someone. 
<coughs> all teachings are based on the idea that there's, a, there's a, something you could choose to do or be, and that will lead to something else. There isn't anything to lead to, because all there is, is this. It's already this. Where would you go? How can you go anywhere when what you're looking for is already this? But the difficulty with me is that it thinks it has to discover this. So it develops the awareness about this. And the more it develops awareness about this, the more distant it, come, it comes from this, because it's actually knowing this, trying to know this. The moon lives in a, in a world that it thinks it knows, and it thinks the more it knows, you see the seeking for knowledge that's happening at the moment, the more the self can know, the more in control it will be. So it also approaches the idea of enlightenment from a, a, a sort of knowledge-based perception. This is about absolute innocence. This is about absolute innocence and wonder, which is unknowing. It doesn't, you don't need to know anything to know that all there is is this. <laughs> it's this, look. Not somewhere else. So, would you say mindfulness gets in the way of this? Well, mindfulness is only another word for awareness. It's become a fashion for thing lately, but it's simply applied or focused awareness which makes feel, people feel better for a short while. Because somewhere there, they focus their awareness on sitting down or walking or whatever it is. And somewhere, they go into a sort of um, detached state, which feels very good for a little while. Rest of the no. Now what should we talk about? <laughs> <laughs> that whole it's all the same thing. You are a person, you did something, or you're doing something, therefore the, your apparent action that you've chosen to take means that it has this effect or that effect. So you did it. And it's just the same dream. Karma, all that sort of thing, you know, is is simply all the same dream. Karma, the, the idea that you did something to build up good or bad karma that you can now undo or do or make up. It's, just, it's like reincarnation. It's I will continue, me will, the self will continue. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's Oh, well, it's thorny if you think there's a real me. Yeah, it does. does it but feels if you like think it's there's a real self, then you then you'd obviously like to believe in reincarnation. Really. Not not reincarnation, <coughs> oh. but responsibility. It feels, oh, like, right. it feels like as as a as a me mm. in, in my life. There's there's, there's a there's a growth is 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 about taking more responsibility oh, for my actions and not blaming. <laughs> It's all moral crap. <laughs> <laughs> Morals and ethics are simply made up by man or woman, the self, in order to make its story more comfortable. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like a, an issue of morality. So actually there's still a feeling there that there is a me who can choose to do good, to do good or bad. No, no not really. I, just, oh. I, I don't feel like I choose. I just have to say sorry an awful lot. Sorry. <laughs> sweet. Yes. That's so sweet. <laughs> so when you become a leader, you just say, well, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> See, you see, the end of me is the end of relationship. 
There's nothing to relate. You don't relate to the wall or a yeah. person because there isn't a, anybody there to relate to. It's the end of but relating is about I meet somebody and oh I like them, so I must try and make our relationship work, and I must do this to please that and do that. And that's all the structure you build around. You know, when you first meet somebody, the computer goes, do I like them? Do I not like them? How will I get on with them? So then you started the building blocks of relationship. It's all a story. And as we all know, it, the bricks can all collapse on the ground. There's nothing to relate to. There is no So we talked about all sorts of ideas, and I really, I, I suggest, I'm not telling you to, but just forget it. Just forget it. It's no use to anybody. What's going on here, in terms of any idea that you can take away and live by, it just is ridiculous. You can't do that. But in some way or other, a seed, uh, is planted and somewhere the sense of what was held on to before can fall away. And the other thing is that what, what we what is longed for by the seeker is what is. The, what is is the beloved. You can't ever you can't ever get rid of or lose the beloved because the beloved is all there is anyway. All there is is what is. When you get up and walk out of here, that's the beloved walking out. When you go down the road have a drink, that's the beloved drinking. Wherever you go, the beloved never leaves you. It's constantly all there is. Yay! <laughs>